Well, Terry, I'm back again after a long time. In fact, uh, all of us have been kind of uh, missing a while. Will has been very busy with uh, nationals, entries for nationals, I guess. Uh, Matt over at Dukes has been doing the same thing. And um, from his page, it sounds like he just has been going through something where he just doesn't feel the videos right now. So I get that. I guess we all do. Uh, Andy's been busier than a one-arm wallpaper hanger between the shop, warehouse, and uh, his attendance of the shows and everything. And Sean over at Primed, I guess he's been pretty darn busy at work. I, too, have been picking up a lot of extra work, so that's been keeping me off. Um, and our good buddy Bar up in Rhode Island, Barbados Rex, is dealing with the medical issues uh, with his wife. So... If you're a praying type like me, yeah, maybe a prayer or two for Bar for uh, for Barbados Rex and especially his wife. Uh, but anyway, here we are. Let's talk a little bit about uh, cement slash glue slash adhesive, uh, whatever you call it. Let's take a look at the lineup here and see what we're going to be talking Before about. Before we get started, that incredibly loud, annoying sound you hear, that's this window box air conditioner, which is exactly 30 inches from my face. It's the only way... I can bear to be out here in this garage this time of year. It's currently, what is that, 118 degrees, which ain't quite 120, but it's darn close. So I apologize for the noise, folks. I just gotta have that thing going. So let's take a quick look at these cements here in a line. Glues, cement glues, adhesives. And in fact, even a couple things you can see back there that aren't glues or adhesives, but they will be looked at as adhesives and glues. So there's the big picture. Let's talk about them in detail. Okay, so what talk about a product would be complete without the nitpicky minutia. So we'll start out with uh, cement versus glue versus adhesive. This to me extra thin is an example of a cement. Uh, this melts the plastic, chemically melts the plastic, makes it soft, and that bonds the plastic together as it dries. Glue is, um, I don't know the, uh, I don't know the terms for chemically what's going on, but this doesn't really do anything to the plastic, but it itself does um, a chemical reaction which brings the two together for a permanent bond. Um, and this is what they call an adhesive. It's not really a glue because it's not the strongest, most permanent thing in the world. Uh, it's more of a temporary and it does nothing chemically either. So it's just something to make something sticky so it will adhere to something else. And uh, that's the first thing. And you're probably wondering why is this important? It's, it, it's not horribly important. It's just one of those things that uh, when you're talking to somebody, say a hobby shop owner or something, and you're saying, I'm looking for some glue, they're gonna bring you the glue instead of cement. So that kind of thing. Um, so that's really all there is to that minutia part. So now let's put these back in their proper pens and we're gonna talk about these individually next up. Okay. Uh, the sun's down and it has cooled off to 110 in here, so I think I can live without the air conditioning for a little bit. So, you can hear me. <laughs> anyway, uh, cements. Let's talk about, first, the Tamiya cements here. Um, you're going to see, when you're buying the Tamiya cement, two bottles that both say extra thin, but you're going to notice one's got a little lighter lid than the other. That's the quick setting to me extra thin. Now it's, it dries a little quicker than the regular extra thin, but uh, if you've got something that needs a lot of strength, like a structural fit that's gonna be under a lot of stress or something later, uh, you're probably gonna wanna use this one and just wait for it to dry. It's only like another 30, 40 seconds longer, so it's not a big deal. But this does dry really quick. Um, and what I do with my to me extra thin sometimes is I'll put a drop of black paint in there and that makes it turn black so I can see it in the seams on uh, 
models where I need to see if it actually made its way there. Like if you're holding a bunch of parts together and you just really don't want them to come apart um, and when you let go of the, when you let go of them. <laughs> so that'll help you see that you actually got cement in there. Otherwise, it's not too important. There's another type of, to me, a cement, liquid cement here. You can see on the bottom, this is pretty thick. This is the slow drying stuff. It's basically a slow drying version of this. And what I do is I take these two together and I mix them about half and half and I make myself a medium viscosity. You can see it's a little, let me just get these apart here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. You'll see it's a little slower, a little fa a little slower than the one on the left here. If I move my hand the same, this one really moves on the left. The right one kind of does. And if I take them against the thick one, you'll see that it's not quite as slow as the other one but it's a little uh, thinner. So that's good for parts that you wanna get the uh, cement on it, um, but you don't wanna wait for it to dry all day, because otherwise, if you were gonna take two parts, like this wing half and the other one, which is uh, here, and you try to brush up, brush the cement on it, especially the extra thin, I mean, uh, quick setting extra thin, the cement will dry before you put them together, and then as soon as you let go, they're just gonna come apart. So that's what I use the medium for. And for uh, long runs, like on a, a B17, say a, B, a 148th B17, anything sizable where I want to get that joint and I want to have enough time to get it all put together and cemented, but not let the cement dry first, that's what this is good for. And this is also pretty darn good, good and strong. So I'll sometimes use it on landing gear for fighters to hold it together better. Another type of cement you're gonna see out there frequently is the Mr. Cements. This is four of their, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine, a hundred different ones. These are the ones you're going to see the most. This first one, it's Mr. Cement Deluxe. There's really nothing deluxe about it. It's just regular old cement. In fact, you might have seen their kind of triangle shaped bottle with the red top on it. This is the exact same thing. The only reason they give them different numbers is and name is because this is a smaller size and the triangle bottles a little bigger got more in it but this is basically just standard cement um, kind of equal to the medium that I made of the Tamiya then you're gonna have Mr. Cement S this is uh, a faster drying cement than the other than the uh, deluxe this is made for having the parts together. Let me put them together here first. So if you were gonna do this wing, you'd wanna put the halves together first and then use the brush to brush in there, hold it together till, the, till it dries, probably about uh, 30, 45 seconds, and then, then let go of it. The SP is basically the S, it just dries quicker and it's a little stronger. Some people say the SP is for superpower. Uh, I don't know. Then the SPB is basically just uh, the SP with some black dye in it so you can see it. So you'll be able to see where you put it. And to give you an idea here of the difference in these, let me take a wing half here. I'm gonna take the, uh, let me see if I can bring the camera in close enough to where you'll actually be able to see this happen. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to tilt this down. Sorry for the shaky camera work, but I am an amateur. I'm going to take the uh, Mr. Cement Deluxe, the Mr. Cement S, and the Mr. Cement SP. And I'm going to brush a little bit of each one on this wing here. And you're going to see the different speeds that it dries at. Now to keep it fair, I'm going to loosen all the tops at the same time. And I'll apply them within a second of each other, so you'll get an idea. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to brush on the uh, SP, or the uh, Deluxe. That's the plain old Deluxe. Then we'll put on the S. And then we'll put on the SP. And you're able to see already a difference. The SP has already dried. It's gone. The uh, S is almost there, but this has got all day to go. See, it's really tacky still I clean that off on my finger here this one's mostly dry it's a little tacky but this one's just done so that's the difference on those these are very good cements um, 
I like personally the brushes that Tamiya gives you better because they're, they're smaller and easier to use. I'll give you a size comparison here between the Tamiya Extra Thin and the uh, Mr. Cement here after I loosen up my camera. All right, so here's the brush comparison between the two. Here's the Mr. Cement brush. Here's the Tamiya brush. You can see this has got a much more accurate uh, applicator on it. So that's why I like that. The cements though, I'd say, I'd say they're about equal with each other. Then there's the uh, Miguel, he, Big Ammo, Miguel Jimenez makes these. Uh, very similar thing as before. There's a extra thin and then there's the medium dense slow dry. And I'll turn these over. You'll be able to see the difference in them. You can see the one on the left is moving a lot faster than the one on the right because one on the right is much thicker. And like I do with my uh, Tamiya, I mixed the two together and made myself a medium viscosity that's right between them. So that takes care of our cements. Now um, let's talk about glues. And what you're going to see mostly is the, uh, some people call it PVA, which I really don't know what the PVA stands for. Um, but it's basically Elmer's glue. And Elmer's makes a clear and a white. Um, I use the clear because I, if I'm going to use Elmer's, it's probably going to be on a canopy or something like that. Or I'm going to make a, a bulb cover or something that I want really to have clear. So even though the, the white dries kind of clear, this is really, really clear. You can see right through the bottle, in fact. Um, and then there's a, this MIG Ammo Ultra Glue, Ultra Acrylic glue, glue, which basically this is a glue that's white. It's kind of thickish. As you can see, I could tilt the bottle and it's not pouring out yet, see? It's kind of thickish, and uh, this is good for applying the uh, photo etch metal to your plastic is it'll bond the two of them together and it's very and uh it's uh it's kind of slow dry and it says it fully dries in six hours you can wash it off with water so that's what those are the two common glues you're gonna see now you'll see another couple type of uh another kind of glue called micro crystal clear by uh Microscale Industries. This is very, very similar to the MIG Ultra Glue. Very similar. I've done a test with them and they both were pretty much identical except that this dries quicker. And this is good also. This is, uh, I haven't tried it with Photo Etch, but I've done it to join um, canopies to the airplanes, those kinds of things. Very similar product. Then we're on to another type of of glue that many of you are familiar with and that's CA glue. You can get all kinds of CA glue. It comes in all kinds of shape, sizes, bottles, everything. And uh, it even comes in these handy little miniature packs. You can get it liquidy um, like this Loctite thin. You can see it in the bottle here. It's, it's really thin. It, it's really easy to run which means you can get it on your fingers and not be able to pull them apart. No kidding, you, it it will keep your fingers together until you get some debonder like some acetone or something. Otherwise, your fingerprints are coming off, which is great if you're criminally inclined, but not otherwise. The problem with this stuff is, particularly this um, this brand here, I don't know whose brand it is, but uh, Horizon Hobbies, this tends to dry in the tube on me. You can see I've had this about six months now. Granted, it's the garage out here. It's hell's armpit. It's hotter than hell. But you can see it's already dried completely in the tube. And so it's kind of useless to me. Um, the reason a lot of people like to buy the ones like this brand here is because you can take the top off and put on these handy tips that you can buy from aftermarket companies and they get this long skinny taper. Before being rudely interrupted by my phone shutting itself off because it got too hot out here, uh, they've got this long skinny taper which gives you a really good precise application of where you're going to put this, the, uh, the glue. Now, what a lot of people do 
And to use this thing, the common name is kicker. Uh, here's an example put up by Bob Smith Industries. It's, it's an accelerator, CA glue accelerator. Most folks just call it kicker. And when you put um, CA glue on something and you want it to dry super duper fast, you spray this on it and in about three seconds, it's done, it's dry. Now out of these CA glues, my favorite to use, that I use probably 90% of the time, is this Starbond Black. Uh, this stuff is a little more manageable. It has a good life. I've had this for about two years in the bottle, in this garage, and you can see it's still good. It, uh, it has pulverized rubber in it, so um, you won't have the problem yet with a lot of the regular CAs like, like Loctite and the other clear ones is if you glued something together and then you drop it, then it breaks when it, when it, hits, when it hits the ground or the table or whatever, it, it, the shock breaks it. This has a little bit of give in it, which uh, is very handy to have. I mean, it's not gonna let something move around, you know, like this or anything, but like this or anything drastic. But if you're putting something together and you need to bend the glued part just a little bit, it won't break. And you can drop things, uh, and not have so much trouble all the time with it. Um, and it will also accept a spray of kicker like the other CA glues will. And it's easy to see, and it's also a fantastic filler for gaps. Um, so that's that's one I would get if it was me. In fact, it is me, and I do get it. <laughs> all right, now uh, moving on to other types of glues. Um, there is two-part epoxy where you mix a resin and a hardener together and you have typically five to 15 minutes to use this stuff before it dries and it dries rock hard very rock hard very strong you can drop it practically throw it and your parts won't break then there's two-part tube and heat two two-part putty um, epoxies like this JV weld um, some people use it for filling large gaps. I just use it wherever I need something super duper strong. I'll use that or this. I'll use the uh, tube stuff if I want it to be uh, kind of like a clay where it's not gonna run and drip. And if that's not important, I'll use this stuff. I like this because it dries so quick. Um, something important is uh, I always mix these in these little medicine cups but you gotta be kind of careful. If you're holding that medicine cup in your hand when those two start to chemically start drying, man, it gets hot and it'll burn your hand a little bit. So watch out for that. Other types of glues are your, yeah, just your common run of the mill department store glues like this E6000 and this uh, Beacon Craft glue. This dries kind of rubbery. It doesn't have a whole lot of strength, but every once in a while I'll find a place where I where I wish I had it and I, and I can use it. Usually for doing things like sticking magnets up on things um, that, that aren't not made of metal, but I want the magnet to stay there so I can put other things on the magnets. Um, and you can see it, it dries kind of kind of rubbery. I don't know if you can see that very well, but like that, see? And uh, back in grade, this is stuff, remember when you were in grade school and the stuff had that sticky glue on the back of it and you'd put it under your nose to make it look like a booger and get all the girls grossed out? That's kind of what that is. And I use this periodically to, uh, I keep it in my general toolbox for the house. It's, it's kind of like RTV silicone, but it's not quite as strong. Um, there's places for this too. Uh, Microscale Industries also puts out something called um, micro liquid tape. And this stays white. Shake it up a little bit. It's not quite thin, not quite thick. Um, I'll pull some out of here that dried around the, uh, the the neck. And what this is, is um, it's like kind of like spider web. That's the best way I can tell you. It's kind of like spider web after it's dried. You can see it kind of sticks to things and stretches with them. See, like that. But it doesn't leave a mess on your fingers when you take it off. It just tends to stick to everything it touches. Just like spider web, see? And uh, what this is great for, I use this on posable canopies, like uh, where I'm gonna pose a canopy open. I might wanna close it one day and open it another. This is good for that because you can put the parts on and off at will. And it washes off really easy with water. It dries 
fairly quick. So what I do is I put the glue on where I'm gonna put the part and then I put the part on. So usually what I do is I let the glue dry in place, just a little dab, tiny little drop, barely perceptible. And then I'll just put the part over it. And I can take it apart and put it back together as much as I want to. And now there's your kind of oddball and outside stuff. Uh, the first of which we'll talk about is what everybody calls sprue goo. Um, basically what you do is you take some plastic um, and you can get as anal and varied about this as you want, like making one just from Hasagawa sprues so you can use it on Hasagawa models or on a Tamiya, whatever. Um, but it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. But what you do is you cut it in small pieces and then you put it at the bottom of a cement bottle or a jar or whatever you want. And then you put a bunch of either extra thin cement or a lot of people like to do is put some MEK at the bottom and then over time anywhere from hours to days the plastic's going to break up and uh, become liquid liquid plastic basically and you can see it there and it's good for it's good for struck very strong structural joints or if you want to fill something it'll take you can make it super thick and it'll look like it's uh, doing the job, but it's going to sink on you over time. It's because it's thick and it takes a long time to dry and it's going to recess as it, as it cooks off. So it's good to do it in several thin layers, but it's really good, strong stuff. And then if you want, if you're, if you like to have a good, pure, purest plastic available to make your sprue, your sprue goo from, take extra canopy part, uh, your, your uh, extra canopy sprues, put them in the bottom. And then do the same thing, put some liquid cement in there or some MEK, and then just put your color of choice, red, blue, black, whatever, so you can see where you've got it. And this is also good to see because it kind of settles as you leave it and don't use it. And uh, you can see if it's settled or not because the clear stuff is going to be on the top and the plastic is going to be on the bottom because it's heavier. Um, so if you put the dye in there, you'll be able to tell right away if it's mixed well or not, and this is. And when they dry, this is prone to drying out in the bottle, but all you gotta do is reconstitute it with your uh, liquid cement or your MEK and it'll come back to life. And this is also really good for for uh, gap filling and those kinds of things. Um, and the nice thing about these sprue goos is you can go right to sanding them. You don't have to worry about recesses and gross things later or anything like that. It'll sand beautifully because it's basically, it's just plastic. Then there's the real outside stuff. Let me shake the camera, cover your eyes, you're gonna get seasick for a minute here, okay? The really oddball stuff, and it's not even cement at all, it's just chemicals that are very strong. Uh, the two favorites people use, MEK and acetone. Um, let's give an example of this. I'll cut these here. I'll cut a couple pieces of plastic right here on the camera where you can see it. One, two, and then what I'm going to do is zoom out so it's harder to lose what I'm doing and focus on the uh, table there. And I'm going to pop one of these open. Let's use the MEK because that gives an uh, incredibly strong bond. And I'm going to take some of this out and I'm going to put these two pieces together. And this is just an example I'm doing here. And then just put a little bit between them. And you want to be careful. This MEK is bad stuff, man. Chemically. Very bad stuff. And I'm going to hold it together a little while. And you can see it. Hopefully you can see it right before your eyes starting to melt the plastic up in there. I'm going to put this down for just a little bit while I put this uh, pipette away and close the bottle. While that's drying, something else a lot of people will use. Let me try not to kick the camera here while I move. Something a lot of people use, besides that MEK, as a liquid cement is the Tamiya Airbrush Thinner. 
which is, if you take the material safety data sheets, which are very easy to find on Google and look at them, uh, pretty damn same, like 99% similarity. I think they just invert the two chemicals, one's 51 to 49, and they just turn it to 49 to 51. But this will do the same thing. So basically, if you don't want to get to you to keep buying small or uh, you can't find it, you can use it as a replacement for Tamiya Extra Thin. Basically the same thing, and they both smell identical. Um, so here's the part I just glued together with the MEK. You can see it's bonded. It's been about, what, a minute and 12 seconds, something like that, and it's kind of already started to bond. Sheesh. See what I mean? Let me try this way. Damn it. There we go. Now you'll see it. See how the plastic inside is melted together? There we go. So that's basically what it does. It melts the plastic, and then it, as it dries off, the, the plastic is chemically welded together. So that's the principle of all these liquid cements. Um, acetone, I haven't tried, um, but supposedly it's the same thing. Uh, not same thing as MK, but the same result. It supposedly does the same thing. But what I use my acetone for is debonding uh, the CA glues from my fingers and the bench and places like that. So that's basically, in a very long-winded nutshell, the deal with some okay. So let's go ahead and do a demo. What's the purpose of doing all this without showing you a demo of how it works? So... You can see we've got this 170 second uh, zero wing ready to go and be put together. Now, if I was going to go ahead and put the glue along the edges and then put it together, I'd want to use something like the uh, Tamiya slow dry or the MIG slow dry or the uh, Mr. Cement Deluxe. Now, what I'm, if I'm going to use any of these other ones, these thin, or maybe even the uh, the medium viscosity stuff that you make yourself between the slow and the quick dry. But let's go ahead and show how to use these liquid cements because these are the most popular ones used right now. Which, uh, if you are old fellers like me, you remember the tube glue where you put it together, it squeezes out, and it gets on your finger. Take your finger away and there's a nice fingerprint there and a long string of glue and your whole model goes to crap. We don't have to worry about that anymore. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the part put it together here. And the first thing I demonstrate is the brush method along the back. And I'm going to put this together. I'm going to hold it in place. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this, this, brush, this glue brush and I'm going to brush this in here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit what's called capillary action. Get that to focus for you. Okay. And you're just going to put it in the gap right there. That little, And a little bit of glue is going to be drawn in there as you can see. Then when you squeeze it together, it's going to hold. Now what I like to do is squeeze it a little harder than I have to. And you can see between the parts, you see a little bit of plastic being squeezed out? right in here come on focus baby there you go see a little bit of extra glue being pushed out you can see it pretty good now this is actually flash right here but right up here you can see a little bit of glue being squeezed out i leave that be i like to and, and here's why because after a while and this thing is starting to dry or completely dried I can get my sanding stick and I just sand that down and I've got a perfect seam when I'm done with that. Now, then another way you can do it is hold it completely together, like on the back of the wing where, where it needs to stay sharp. And then just kind of, I don't turn the brush like this because you're going to end up getting it on the top and the bottom. What I do is I turn the brush sideways and I just run it along the high part of the brush, like right here, like, uh, there see towards the stem that way I don't get too much glue on it and it takes a little more applying but it gets in there then I just hold it mildly tight 
a little spot I missed right here. And you can see why I, I put the black dye in it, because if I used my black dye, it'd be a lot easier to see where I got the cement. But, uh, and I don't put quite, and I, and I don't put quite as much in here, because I don't want to have to sand the back unless I'm sanding it this way, back and forth, because if I do it this way, it's going to get dull and it's going to be too thick and the back won't be sharp like it should. And you can see that's done now. Now the front of the wing, um, I'm going to show you again capillary action. You don't have to put the glue all the way along. See there's a hole for, for the gun here or the cannon, whatever it had in there. And that's going to be a stopping point. So I'm going to, right where the two plastics are touching, I'm going to put it there. And then I'm going to run it towards that break. And now it'll be glued up to that point. Or cemented rather, right? And then... And typically when you get parts that have been warped from the box, you're going to see this. This is why I do it in little parts. I do it just a couple inches at a time. You don't see, all you have to do is touch it and it'll get sucked in there and drawn in there. And I squeeze it good and hard and you can see the bubbles in the front. And the bubbles in the very front of it where the joins are, that's going to make a beautiful join there after I've sanded it down. So if you ever looked at someone's models, you're like, oh man, how'd they get that super smooth front without all that line and seam that I have that's how that's one of the ways how that and a little bit of elbow grease from sanding so now it's put together I can let this sit about oh four or five minutes remember I live in the desert it's hot and it's dry so four or five minutes it's ready to start working on you know what I mean um, so it's good to go there um, so that's basically how the, how the uh, liquid cement works something else is um, let me do something here because this is going to happen to you sooner or later. You're going to spill a little bit of cement on here, like I'm going to do right here. Oh my gosh, look at those big heavy drops there. Don't touch it, man. Just just leave it be. Just the resist. The temptation is to rub it with your fingers or something to try to save it. Just leave it be. And you'll see as it dries, it almost just goes away. You see, it's still wet there. But when I turn it sideways, you can see the lump of where it was elevated from being on there is already gone. Just so you know, that's a light. That's not where this where the glue is. The glue's over, over here. If you can see it, if I tilt it well enough, you can see the two droplets there. See? But I'm gonna tilt this now, and you're gonna see the elevation. It's not there anymore. So see they're most of the way dry. Just leave it be. You can see right here, whoops, clumsy bastard. Uh, you can see right here where that line is still there. You didn't sacrifice anything. And in fact, I spilled a lot in the middle earlier, see? All this mess. Later on, all you gotta do is get a little bit of a sanding stick, okay? Let me zoom out here again. And I'm just going to sand this out a couple grades of sanding. And I, should, I probably should do that wet, but I'll just do it dry. Get a couple sanding sticks. Here, a 320 you go here. A 400 is kind of used, but let's see. And I'll sand it with that. Now, I'm not going crazy and using really good sanding stuff here. I'm just using these cheap sticks here. Um, and then I'll just make it wet with a little bit of water here. Here we go. And uh, just rub that around and then dry it with my shirt. And now you can see, I didn't use much good sanding on it, but you can see it's pretty much gone. If I get some finer sandpapers, like I go into my good stuff, like the blocks and everything, you'd see it would be just as smooth as in here. So let's take a look at this again now. So there they are again. In fact, I think I will do that just to show you here. I'll start with a 320. Just do the front one. Okay. I should probably do this wet. Let me get my water again. There we go. Okay, a 320. 
Okay, let me get a, uh, a six. And let's do an eight. Hundred that is. Let's go, Texas T. You remember that show, Beverly Hillbillies? And then what I'll do is I'll get the better stuff and pull out my Infinity sticks. These things are great. I'll get their six. And I'll get their thousand, which is. Oh, you're right. Let's get their eight first. And now I'll get their thousand. Wipe that off. So you see, I've got more sanding to do completely smooth. But you can see the drop's gone. You know, this is ready to go. All I got to do is keep sanding it till it's real smooth again. And, uh, you'll find that the problem will be over. There's a three, a five. I'll dry that. Get a couple of buffing sticks here. Sorry to bore you with this. I know it's just so much fun watching somebody seeing something, but this is just to kind of show you something. almost done but you can see now it's just down to micro scratches which you can take out with uh, some Novus or some Tamiya polish but the only thing left is that little trace of discoloration but you'll see here when you turn it sideways it's just not there and then when you paint it you won't even know it was ever there so don't panic if you spill a little bit just leave it me and just so you know I'm not totally full of crap um, I sanded and painted this uh, Zero's wing um, to show you where it was sanded along the front where I had remember I had those bubbles sticking out and I sanded them down you can see well now that my pencil rubbed it you can see it me, there's another one I just made a move. let me back up and use my eraser you can see along the front except where I bumped it no seam line it's nice and smooth yeah the limitations of an iPhone but if I turn it to the side you can easily see on the side where the uh, bubble is still there and not been sanded and there's a little bit of a line but when you see where it gets sanded out smooth you can see it's gone just a little shine from the intensely bright light right here and along the back it's uh it's reflecting a little bit of light but you know you just got freaking carbon lead all over the back of it where i touched it but you can see it's good there too but anyway um one last thing I want to show you also, very important when you're applying the glue, is if you've used tape or rubber bands, be careful not to let it get up to there because it's going to seep under your tape and get all over the place in there uh, and do the same thing to you with your rubber bands. It's kind of, this stuff is so liquidous, I don't know what the word is, uh, fluid, that it will, whatever it touches, it's going to try to run up through capillary action. That might be the tape, a rubber band, anything that's there, your fingers. That's been known to happen as well. So be really careful about that. So you might want to be, um, I'd rather use my, I'd rather just use my fingers and hold them than to count on rubber bands and tape. It keeps me from getting into trouble with it. But uh, anyway, that's that. Let's one last little chance to look here. One last little chance before the wrap up. You can see, I sanded off the front with, for the, so there's no paint, so you can see the difference. And you can see it's smooth, no seam line, except under my thumb. I'm going to move my thumb here. You see that little line there where there's a white, where the black line? That is where I didn't get the sand all the way across. But you see that little bit that comes out there where I neglected the sand, you can see in here. But where I got the sanding done, it's perfectly smooth and you'd never know anything was done. All you'd have left to do is some rescribing. Okay, that about. about wraps it up. The big takeaways, what's the difference between cement, glue, and adhesive? There's no test on it, except that if you're asking for glue, they're going to give you glue instead of cement. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, what all these different types of adhesives, what you can use them for, what they're good at, what they're bad at. How not to make mistakes, uh, like getting fingerprints on them or parts sticking to your finger. Um, 
you don't have to buy the stuff in the factory bottles. You can, you know, get a replacement for it, or um, you can even replace the factory stuff with something else that's the same thing, but in a different bottle, see? Um, but me, I kind of like the predictability of I look at this bottle, I know what it is. Um, so I kind of like to have those. And my big thing from all this was I finally learned what all these different Mr. Cements are for. And um, it's a lot it's a lot better when you know what you're using it for. Uh, it would drive me nuts when I'd go to use this, thinking, oh, it's deluxe, it must be the best stuff. So I bought that instead of the S and the SP. And I wonder what's so magic, what's so deluxe about this? Well, nothing. Um, it's, uh, just a regular cement. So anyway, um, if you can find it, and if you can, my hat's off to you. There was this stuff called 10X7R, I think. It was 10X, T-N-E-X-7R. Anyway, it comes in a tall medicine-style bottle like this one. And man, that was the best stuff they ever made. Uh, so if you do bump into that stuff, man, get it. That, that's great cement. Um, the MIG Extra Thin is pretty darn close smells pretty similar not that i'm sniffing glue or anything but um that's pretty darn close to it but any of these things whether you buy the mr hobby cements the tamiya cements uh they're all pretty good uh the only one i really didn't care much for was the uh the testers liquid cement i didn't care much for that um but any of these will do the job for you just know what they're for so what a lot of people make the mistake is they buy the, uh, to me, extra thin or a quick one like the Mr. Cement SP, and they see it's got a brush, and they think that means you can just brush it on there, smoke a cigarette, have a drink, and then put your part together, and hey, this glue is, this glue is crap, it doesn't work, it doesn't hold together. You know, using it wrong, that's just what happens. So I hope this helped you out, and um, I'll see you again next time. Hopefully it won't be three months again. In the meantime, happy modeling. Bye-bye.